Hi, and welcome to The Sweet Life of Steve. We have another twofer today. It's for you and only you. Well, and maybe not. We are making a savory shortcake with tomatoes and a creamy burrata cheese. And we're taking some of that shortcake dough and turning it into a sweet caramel poached pear cobbler. This menu just has me feeling very brunchy. I love brunch. Rob and I used to own a B&B &B, and our Sunday brunch was amazingly spectacular. I know, right? A gay couple with a B&B. &B. This is a Mrs. T. I've got this great local gin from Grey Wolf Craft Distilling. And I've taken some of that gin and infused it with green tea. I've also made a simple syrup infused with hibiscus tea. So that's where our Mrs. T comes from. To infuse the gin, I've taken one cup of gin and one tea bag. Tea bag the hell out of that gin. This is tea and we're in the south, so we're gonna drink it out of our mason jar. I'm using one half ounce of the green tea gin, one ounce of the hibiscus simple syrup, and that's gonna just add this gorgeous, beautiful color. Look at that. The juice of half a lemon, and I don't even care if I get the seed in there because all I'm gonna do is plop, just like that. We're just gonna shake it around a little bit. Look at that pretty color. Ooh. And now I'm gonna to top it off with Prosecco. Probably about four ounces, maybe six, just depending. And now we sip casually and read people for trash. <gasps> I'd like to propose a toast. Here's to the ladies who brunch. Everybody laugh. Refreshing. It's all downhill from here. Let's get started on our shortcake dough. I'm using cake flour here instead of AP flour because cake flour has a little less protein, so we'll have a more tender dough. To that, I'm adding some sugar, some baking powder, and then I'm just going to whisk that together just to get everybody sort of combined. Now, I'm going to take some of this mixture and add it into my little food processor here. This is so cute. Of course, you can do this in a big one if you have a big one. And I've got one hard boiled egg yolk. Drop that inside just like this. And then we're gonna blend it until it's well combined. That should be about enough. You wanna make sure that you don't see any little egg yolky bits. And what this is going to do is add additional fat, which is flavor and tenderness, to our dough without adding additional liquid. It's a very European trick. Get everybody into there like this. Then we can just mix it all together. And now we're going to add our butter. This, of course, can be done by hand, but I'm going to use the machine. Everybody goes into there. Wonderful. And now I'm going to add my butter. Now, here's a fun thing. So many recipes for shortcake, short doughs of any kind, you know, biscuits, that sort of thing, all call for cold butter cut into little pieces that then you have to painstakingly cut up into your dough super, super fast so you can maintain that cold butter. We're using room temperature butter. <gasps> We're gonna mix that together just for a couple of seconds. Blending, blending, blending. <laughs> We're getting very close. We're almost there. Getting super, super close. We're there. We want our mixture to look like cheap Parmesan cheese. The kind that comes in the jar that has the green lid on it. You know what I'm talking about? So can we get in there? This is nice and flaky. Little bits of butter. Here's kind of a little bit of a secret for all of this. For things like biscuits, pie dough, where we want it to be really flaky, we need the butter to be in bigger bits. But when we want a nice tight crumb, yeah, it should always be tight. This is a short cake. 
then we need our butter bits to be a lot smaller. So this Parmesan cheese stage is exactly right where we need to be. And of course, if you wanted to do this by hand, you could just take this and kind of rub it through your fingers, just like this. And it looks like snow. Fabulous. Now for the liquid portion of our short cake. We have one egg, one egg yolk, and now I'm going to add just enough heavy cream until I get to 250 milliliters. So depending on the size of your eggs depends on how much or how little cream you're going to use. A short dough is basically a lot more fat to flour ratio. In here we've got butter, fat, we have our hard cooked egg yolk, fat, we have heavy cream, fat, more eggs, fat. Fat is flavor, fat is tenderness. So FYI, if anybody is ever trying to like body shame you and says that you're fat, you say, no, I am flavorful. Blend this together, make sure that it's really, really well incorporated because it's only going to mix in here for just a few moments. So you really want to do all of your mixing here. Everybody in, mix, mix, mix. Three, two, one, beautiful. Now our dough looks pretty soft, which is totally fine. So what we're going to do is we're now going to chill this. And this needs to chill for at least two hours. What's gonna happen in the chilling process is that flour is gonna get hydrated by all of that liquid. That's going to give us more tenderness. Also, since we use room temperature butter, by putting it in the refrigerator, the butter is now going to chill and seize up. So when we bake it, we'll get the benefits of the cold butter. We're going to get the rise that happens from the steam and the melty of the butter inside, which creates flakiness and tenderness and deliciousness. Let's get cold. Our shortcake dough actually has sat overnight in the refrigerator, and I'm going to scoop it, taking my three cup, uh, what is this? A third of a cup. I'm taking this because this is the size that I want. Of course, you can make it bigger or smaller, it doesn't matter. Taking a little bit of the dough and just greasing this up, just like this. So we're gonna scoop these, not roll and cut. Dredge in a little flour. Come in here and scoop de doop There we go. Beautiful. And we lather, rinse, repeat. And lather, rinse, repeat. And lather, rinse, repeat. And lather, rinse, repeat. As needed. And of course, I have some dough left over, which will become our cobbler. And now, I'm going to just uh, brush them with a little bit of cream. I really like this uh, two finger method here. Just get in there with those two fingers. Yeah, there we go. Nice and creamy. Beautiful. This is going to be a savory shortcake. So we're just leaving it like that. If this was going to be a sweet shortcake, then we would sprinkle sugar on. It's not just for strawberries anymore. Let's go to the oven. Maybe a little one of these. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Boom. And we bake them until they're done. What's next? I got ice in my mm. What's next? Look at these, they are beautiful. We just pulled them out of the oven. Always pull out when you're done. They're golden brown. Here's a way you can tell that they're baked is that um, just when you try to pick them up, they're gonna feel like they're not going to fall apart in your hand. That's it. Can you smell what the Steve is cooking? Like there, is that right? Well, let's just YouTube him. Mm, get down in here. Smell what the Steve is baking! <sighs> or maybe you want to get like just this fabulous crumbliness. Broom! PA Rob! Mm, that really good. Caramel poached pear cobbler. Delicious. We're making the entire thing in this cast iron pan. I'm making my caramel in here. I'm poaching my pears in here. We're going to put it in the oven and we're going to eat it out of here. It's kind of going to be like macaroni and cheese. You should always eat it out of the pot you made it in with the spoon you made it with while sitting on the couch watching like a Grey's Anatomy marathon or something alone in the dark like a lady. To start our caramel, we have some water. We're this isn't plugged in. Who is the PA on this show? He needed some power, so he said, let's plug the thing in, shall we? <laughs> okay, we're adding our 
water, and sugar, the main ingredients of caramel or caramel, depending on where you're from. No judgment here. This is a judgment-free zone. And I'm just going to make sure that all of the sugar is completely moistened. Very important step in making your caramel. If your sugar isn't completely moistened, you can get some crystallization there, and then it's gonna be ruined. And the nice thing about also making this in the cast iron pan is cast iron property is that it naturally just sort of keeps holding that heat. So we're actually gonna cook a little bit faster by doing it in here than if we did it in some other generic pan. Let's do some pears. Cut to um, close up of me sort of doing them already because that would be fun. Our caramel is sort of moving right along. You always wanna make sure never, ever stir the caramel. You just swirl the pan ever so slightly. That's gonna help you spread out because obviously in the middle, it's cooking faster than the exterior. So you just sort of swirl it around a little bit. If you, if you actually stir it, you'll cause it to crystallize. And we want to get to a medium to light amber, sort of hovering somewhere in between light to medium. Remember, once we throw our pears in, that caramel is gonna to continue to cook, so it will deepen in color. So don't go too, too dark right off the start. And then we are going to mount in our butter. Yes, mount. <laughs> mount that butter. I'm using room temperature butter here. Colder butter is gonna create more spatter. And you also want to lower your heat a little bit as you're mounting in your butter. Make sure you get all of that buttery deliciousness in there. This is not a caramel sauce. There's no heavy cream or anything in here. This is just sugar, water, and butter. So we make pan caramels all the time, and then we poach various fruits in them to give them that caramelized flavor, caramel caramel. This is a trick we use at our bakery all the time. Just get that nice and emulsified, and then I'm gonna dump in my pears. Whoops, this one escaped. And now I'm definitely gonna lower the heat a little bit and just get those down in that caramel. And we're letting them poach. Poaching is cooking at a lower temperature in a liquid. Gently cooking, yes. And something fun is going to happen as these pears sit in the caramel, caramel, depending on where you're from, and as they start to cook, they will release some of their juices. Oh God, did I miss a joke about juices releasing? God damn it. That's gonna thin out a little bit this caramel, and then we're gonna reserve that and turn it into a gravy that we're gonna put on top of our cobbler when it's done. And this can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how ripe those pears are. We want them to soften up. Most of the cooking is happening here. And then when we put our cobbler bits on top, they'll go in the oven and cook just until those are brown. So we don't need to worry about cooking the fruit in the oven, we're just cooking the delicious cakey bits on top. We're at a really nice point here. We're going to strain these because I want to keep the juice. Of course, you probably should use a bigger strainer, but this is the one that I have. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And now I'm going to stir in my aromatics. And this is something that's really just to your personal preference. I'm using cinnamon, a little bit of clove because I love clove and pear together. And I'm using mace. It's not quite as nutmeggy as nutmeg, obviously, because it's mace, but it still is in that same family. Ginger also works really wonderfully here. We'll give those a wonderful little stir. Oh, it smells so good in here. We are going to do our topping. Take some of our little bits of dough, and we're just going to sort of plop this on. We are cobbling together this little dessert, which is why it's called a cobbler. I like to leave little gaps, because I want to see the fruit as it's baking, and whatever little bit of juices are still in there are gonna kind of bubble through. Then, we're gonna do something magical with this to make a gravy. Into the oven we go, 350 degrees, and we bake it until, or which is 175 Celsius, by the way, and we bake it until it's golden brown and delicious. Or, as we say at the bakery, you bake it till it's done. So remember, this had some butter in there, and it's got these beautiful pear juices, and all we're going to do is just whisk it. And you want to just keep whisking it as it cools. And as it cools, the butter's gonna solidify a little bit and we're basically making like a little mini caramel sauce. 
That's it. That's all you're going to do to that. If it feels a little too runny, you can obviously reduce it down, but it's beautiful just as is. So that's it. Time to put this whole thing together. So of course we're doing a savory shortcake, which means we need some sort of situation to put inside. I've got these beautiful, hello gorgeous, cherry heirloom tomatoes. I'm going to add some salt. And when I mean salt, I mean a lot of salt. Like we are going to liberally salt this. Just when your brain says, you know what, that's too much salt, you're gonna add just a little bit more. And that salt's gonna bring out the natural sweetness of the fruit. Yes, I said fruit. Tomatoes are a fruit. I think I would know a fruit when I see a fruit. Let that sit for a little minute and we're just gonna stir that together. We want the salt to pull out all of the moisture. A little fresh cracked pepper. This is to taste, whatever you like. You want it really spicy, then lots of pepper or not, just a little bit, whatever. Let that marry. I now pronounce you tomatoes and salt and pepper. And then stream in some really good quality olive oil. Beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous. So I'm gonna slice my shortcake. Now you can see how tight that crumb is. Obviously short cake, right? And then to that, I'm gonna add just a little bit of my tomatoes. And now some creamy burrata cheese. And now some more of our pretty little tomatoes. Honey, you wanna come eat? <laughs> By all yes. means, move at a glacial pace. You know how that thrills me. What do we got? So we have a short cake, although I guess in your case it's a tall cake, mm -hmm. um, with tomatoes and burrata, really pretty. And then we have a poached pear cobbler, Yum. yummy. And we're just gonna drizzle that right over the top. You eat it by cutting it up, stabbing break it, into it, break into it. Yeah, just get in there. I know you don't really like tomatoes. I, I like cherry tomatoes when they're cut in half and salted and peppered mm. with olive oil. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. It's very refreshing because you think of shortcake and you're like, oh, it's gotta be sweet, but no, it does not. We're gonna do a cheers. Ching ching. Mmm. I was thinking about if I'm gonna go back or not. No, I missed it. <laughs> That's delicious. That was really, really good. Remember to subscribe, Yum. like, comment below. Let us know what your favorite brunch dish is. I know what mine is.